One of the greatest pots to make and one of the most useful pots is a square lasagna pan that you can use in the oven and in the kitchen. And the great thing about it is it goes right from the oven to the table. So I'm going to make one here for you and show you how I square them up immediately. I'm going to put things on a bat, attach the bat to the wheel head using pins. I have about two and a half pounds of clay and that's the smallest baking pan I make. You can make them much, much bigger and it gives you a squarish format to use for decorating and cooking. So I'll show you how I do it. First thing I'm going to do is attach the bat to the wheel head using pins. I'm going to dampen it slightly, not wet because I don't want this clay to slide off, but just a dampness. Now center my two and a half or three pounds of clay. Okay, I'm going to stretch it out flatten it and open it up. Now I'm going to leave the floor of this pot a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick. Now as I'm opening I'm pushing down on this rim quite hard also. My fingertips are moving the clay outward but my palm and this hand are pushing down on that rim. Now slide back towards the center slightly compressing this floor Clean the water out of it and rib it flat. I usually work at 11 to center. That means I can see what's happening to the pot on this side, what my tool is actually doing. If I rib here, my hands are covering up all the tool work. So this just works better for me. I'm going to wet this little wall and bring it up rather straight sided. It can flare up a little bit on these sides, but not a lot. And you'll see why in a minute. On baking ware, I tend to make it kind of robust. I want a good thick rim at the top because people are going to shovel food out of it with a kitchen utensil, and I don't want a thin rim used as a prying point right here. So I'm going to use my bevel cut tool, my undercut tool, cut some of this excess clay away, and now put a, a straight side into it. Maybe a little line on the outside will be added. And this line is to help me locate my handles later on when I put two handles on the outside. One more sponge cleaning. And now I'm ready to square this dish. This is a funny technique that I learned many many years ago in England when I was apprenticing there. I'm going to use this what they call a wooden knife and uh, you need to use this thickness. If you try and use this or do this project as with a blade it won't separate the clay enough. I've learned that much. So what I'm going to do is make four points and I'll show you this in a second and they're opposite and parallel to each other. So there are my four points. Two on this side, about three inches apart. Two on this side, about three inches apart. So let's put it back on its on the wheel head. Now I'm going to take this knife, again my wooden knife, and I'm going to connect the two dots all the way through to the floor. And again, I'll show you this in a second. Okay, there's my cuts. As I said, those cuts 
are separated quite far apart from each other. The walls, I've really split them open and they go all the way down to the back. My next step is again to use this knife and I'm going to go at the top to one end of one of the cuts, put the point all the way down to the back, pull it along as I turn the wheel. And again, there's my two crescents cut into the floor. So let's put this back on. Okay, my next step is to wire cut the pot loose from the bat in the direction of the crescent cuts, the length of them. Next step is I take this tool, and any kind of hooked tool will do, but this little tool works well. I'm going to go in here and hook those crescents out. Okay, I've got two empty spaces in here now. And this next step is pretty important. I'm going to dribble some water and put a little pond of water in each of those openings, each of those crescent cuts. And here's the secret to this whole project. I use this fuzzy piece of masonite. Masonite is smooth on one side and fuzzy on the other. The fuzzy side doesn't stick to damp clay or tacky clay which is what the outside wall is right now. So I put it here, and I'm going to push, and I'm going to seam it with my thumb tip. Pull it away, and do the same on this side. Now if your crescent cuts are the right length and equal length, these two walls will be about the same size. my sponge to sop up any water. Now, something I have learned, if I leave these walls dead straight, when they're drying and firing they kind of curl inward. So I bring them out just a little bit. I'm also going to square this side a little bit, but just the wall. I'm not going to square the floor by just pushing in, just slightly. And the same on this side. And one more final pool with the wire in the length of the dish in that direction, not across the dish. Let it dry and later on I'll attach a lug or a handle here and here. That's my lasagna dish.